It's about growing the game of hockey in China for the future. Right now, East Asia is like the gold rush of the 1800s of the Wild West. The first pioneers to settle and extract the untapped resources will get filthy rich. We see the NBA and the NHL try to promote themselves constantly in China. And here we are with one of the greatest opportunities to grow the game in East Asia, with back-to-back -back Winter Olympics in South Korea and China, only for the NHL to say no. I mean, it's pretty clear that the NHL wants to grow the game internationally, but how is sending the best ice hockey players to the Olympics not a better way to promote the game than merely playing two preseason games in China? Nothing made sense to me until I sat down and really thought about it logically, and here's my final conclusion. In order to grow the game in East Asia, sending NHL players to the Olympics is the worst business decision to make. Okay, first, let's get this out of the way. If I don't see a lot of TV rights, distribution rights, licensing rights, or advertising rights for the NHL. Would the NHL go to South Korea? Maybe. But there's one detrimental problem that no one talks about, and since we're trying to grow the game in East Asia, let's think like East Asians for a bit. Let's say you're a South Korean living in Seoul. All your life, you only watch baseball, but then the Olympics arrive in your country, and they're playing ice hockey. You don't know the rules. You can't see the puck. Not a racist joke. It's an actual problem for people who watch hockey for the first time. Batman even tried to make a glowing puck at some point, but I digress. And most importantly, you don't know any of the players players that are coming to your country. So if you're a South Korean that never watched hockey throughout your entire life, for what incentive would you turn on the TV and start watching hockey? Now, let's remove all our biases and emotions aside and think for a moment. Hockey to East Asians is like cricket to North Americans. Cricket is widely popular around the world, but barely any fans are present in North America. So let's just say the Olympics will be hosted in Los Angeles in 2018. The best cricket players from Pakistan, India, England, South Africa, and many more top tier countries come to compete for the gold medal. So for the average North American, why would we watch cricket playing in LA? Like just because they're sending the best players from around the world? Wait, um, best cricket player in the world. Here we go, um. The Mumbai cricket team. Uh, what's Sat Sachin? Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin Tendulkar, baby. No. And that's exactly the same for East Asians in terms of hockey. For the huge majority of the population, they know absolutely nothing about the game. Suppose Crosby or McJesus goes to South Korea. It would be like Sachin Tendulkar, best cricket player in the world, coming to LA. And for this reason, the NHL has failed and failed again in the Olympics to try and grow the game. Batman did say that Salt Lake City of Vancouver generated some interest in North America, but its impact on the worldwide scale was negligible. And that's Sochi, Russia included. And we can see the effects so after 20 years since the Olympics in Japan, it can be said that growing the game by sending NHL players was a failure. No real fan base, no revenue streams, and no interest for hockey. To suggest Korea will be different is a little bit too optimistic, and history indicates that the growth will be little to non-existent. And since the NHL is a multi-billion dollar organization, the calculations they ended up with probably supported their decision even further. Some people suggest that the NHL isn't going just because they had to pay fees like insurance and other expenses, but again, we're talking about a multi-billion dollar organization that sacrificed a whole season just so they can make more profits for the long run. No matter what the cost, if the Olympics were successful, the NHL would 100% go. Okay, so back to the question. Why is this a good thing? Well, seeing the NHL fail miserably in trying to make hockey popular in other countries, a new strategy like not sending NHL players actually might be a better way to grow the game. But first, I want to say that personally, I want hockey to be a globally known sport like soccer or the NBA. Whenever McDavid goes to East Asia, I want hockey players to be a top celebrity. But right now, if you think the NHL is even close to the NBA, you are living in a bubble. The gap is so large that we can't even market the game by sending world-class players. And of course, Bedman really Realizes this, and all they're doing is changing strategy. The NHL isn't necessarily trying to save money. They aren't sending players because repeating the same thing that had no results again and again and again is irrational and just not a smart thing to do. And without my bias as an NHL fan, I would have to say that I support the NHL's decision because I want hockey to be a global sport in the future. So the question now becomes, if sending NHL players doesn't work, how do we grow the game in East Asia? Well, it's quite simple, but really out of anyone's control. 
The first option would be having a Yao Ming of hockey, basically a Chinese born player that could dominate his position for a decade. But seeing 6th round pick Andong Song not looking too promising, let's uh, scratch that. Here's a more probable way at this point. In order for ice hockey to grow in East Asia, the best method would be for regional teams or host teams to be successful. That means without NHL intervention in the Olympics, it would give teams like South Korea a much bigger chance of success, thus motivating South Koreans to actually watch the game. Not quite similar in terms of scale, but one example example I can think of would be the last major international sporting event in South Korea, the 2002 World Cup. After South Korea reached 4th place, soccer in East Asia boomed. New generation of talent exploded in the region and soccer has never been healthier and competitive to this day. But why did the nearby regions boom in soccer as well? Because politics. Um, the history is kinda complicated, um, but long story short, Korea, Japan, and China don't really like each other in terms of politics, and they cannot stand to lose to one another. Politics in the region is so sensitive and personal that the battle in sports can actually propel the East Asian countries to new levels to try and dominate each other in the sport. In order to make the golden age of ice hockey in East Asia, there needs to be another patriotic narrative just like the 2002 World Cup which can make people emotionally invested into the sport. The battle of politics taking stage on the ice will be a far more effective way to grow the game in the region compared to people watching Crosby or McDavid. David. We need their patriotism to be the motivating factor when they reference their respective national pride. And that all starts in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Hey guys, if you enjoyed my content, please support me on Patreon because Patreon is the only source of revenue for my channel. And thank you for your time. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.